Ravi, we made it back for a second episode. We've done it. <laughs> this is the key, right? Uh, ha- habits start when you're consistent or something like Correct. that. Correct. Correct. Third episode, then we can call it a habit, right? Um, yeah. How have you been? How have you been? It's been a busy old uh, couple of weeks, right? It has, yeah. So I just I got back from the Tableau conference on Friday night. Right. Uh, it's a lot long trip. I think eleven hours flight from um, San Diego to London, and then the trip from London to Manchester. But no, it's been good. Um, I think I spent just under a week over there. Um, was able to visit some of the sports organisations there as well. Uh, learn a little bit more about that and explore San Diego a little bit. I think there's a lot to un- un- unpack, but it's 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 an interesting city. Uh, the night we arrived, I immediately because we had a few hours. I think we landed at three. All right, a few hours to stay a week because obviously going that way, the objective is don't sleep. Yeah. Um, immediately changed into shorts and a t-shirt, and of course, <laughs> about an hour later, it started raining. How um, bad was the rain for San Diego? Was it was it like atypical or just quite hard? Just just a sprinkle, but like there was, there was enough for a breeze, right? Like and the temperature drops for sure. Um, yes. So that that was something that uh, I was anticipating. But then again, coming from Manchester, where it rains over two hundred fifty days a year, it's, it's delightful. So yeah, uh, enjoyed fine, that. Fine, but yeah, 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 good conference. How about you? What's good. been going on? Not much. I've been trying to cover conference as it was. So um, it's funny when I, it's interesting. If I don't go to conference, things end up being actually more hectic for me whilst I'm at my desk, basically. <laughs> it's yeah. just a little bit, it's a little bit more of demanding. So I obviously did the two live stream. No, just the one live stream, actually. I didn't do the Envis live stream um, because I was trying to get through a two hour keynote four times to do the summary <laughs> video. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a mechanic people don't understand with editing, but like, if you're going to do something like that, you obviously did the live stream with the keynote. That's two hours gone. Then there is, I need to watch that again because I was live streaming and I wasn't actually paying attention. So there's another two hours gone. Quick hack for that. I watched that on 2X. Like, so yeah. I was just like, <laughs> I, I can get through this quicker, right? Then I needed to record the video of my thoughts. Yep. And then I had to go get the footage from the conference and then splice that with my thoughts. So that's basically another third watch, right? <laughs> and then when I'm done with that, there's kind of like a pseudo fourth watch, which is watching the edited video and making sure there's no mistakes. Right. <laughs> so right. it's like watch it again, <laughs> rewatch bits again. It's just like, oh my word. So um, I'm happy I got that out there. So, though, so, so been... you're a pro. You're a pro, right? If you, if anyone asks oh, you about the Tableau Keynote 2024. You've got basically yeah but like the the thing the thing about that though is if you don't get it out within 24 hours it's also useless to everyone else right because um people <laughs> people people make up their own minds so i actually got it out a little bit late but i got away with it because it was so much to cover that people hadn't quite gotten to it and there's this phenomenon where i think the most likely people to have done an update about it were the people who were there who were too busy to be doing an update about it. So I kind of like got a breather for once because yeah. <laughs> no one had done it yet. <laughs> How was the live stream? Like, did you get many people on? Is Was it a, a good crowd? Like, what was the general feel it, from, from it? It, from it, it you missed were? your presence, Ravi, if that's what you're seeking an answer for. Like, um, that, that's <laughs> it's what you really want to hear. That's all you want to hear, isn't it? We missed you, Ravi. Everyone missed you, of course. Of course we missed you. And now, um, there's 55 people, like, at peak. The way YouTube works is, like, people come and go. And then the point of doing that is actually the video then becomes a video afterwards. So I'm not really doing it for the live stream per se. I'm doing it so that there's a watch-along on the channel. But um, it was really good. Francois joined. You know, the usual Excellent. sort of suspects joined, which is always – which is great. Had really good back and forth. Um, had um, Kirk also tuning in as well. And quite a few people who actually – I had a few people who were at the conference but didn't want to watch at the conference because it was a bit too hectic. So they kind of yeah. took a step away from the conference venue to watch it remotely and sort of joined in with, with me. So that was good. Um, I'm, I enjoy doing them with people because I think there's a social element that you get that's sort of adds a different level. And you can't talk to you in the keynote, right? Like if you're actually there. So you I feel like quite privileged. <laughs> I feel quite privileged because here I am talking smack whilst the person's yeah. talking on stage. And you know, I'm not I'm not interjecting. If you don't like the talk, you can you can go watch somewhere else, right? Like right. they had it on YouTube this year as well, which I didn't account for. Not that that's a bad thing, but it's um I was live streaming Salesforce Plus. I should have just live streamed YouTube, but anyway, right. yeah, it was all good. Yeah, so yeah, but let's let's get into that actually. So yeah, mm-hmm. uh, as you might have guessed, listeners, we're talking about the Tableau Conference this episode. That's sort of 
the main thing we're 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 covering. And I think um, we have two interesting perspectives, Rebecca, because A, you're a customer, fantastic. Um, B, I'm sort of, let's just call me Tableau's hype machine for now. <laughs> like, right? like, so I'm, a, I'm quite biased. People, Teach people you can't, the Tableau, Tim. Teach you the Tableau. There you go. Like, you can't ask me how I thought the Tableau conference was because I think everyone will think, I will say that it went really well, right? So let's ask you the customer, how, how was Tableau conference for you? And you went in person, I was remote. So yeah, how was it yeah. for you? <clears throat> More Tableau, right? I think there was a very conscious effort yeah. Like even when you go into like, so the, the way that's set it up previous years, it's almost the, this four day long thing where your first day is like partners, everyone sort of arrives, then you've got the keynote, then the sessions, and then you might have something else on the, there, there used to be a, um, a sort of guest speaker come in, um, yep. for an afternoon keynote, for example, yep. on the first day, yep. then you'd have devs on stage and then I'm the second day. And then the third day would then be like half a day and then you can go home and there'd be a few community yep. sessions there as well. This year, I think they did it really in an interesting way, which I actually preferred. So the first day was just sessions, like right. partner day, et cetera, existed. But like, if you're a customer um, and, and you, you turned up, um, it was just about sessions. So right. from 9 a.m. to 4.30, there was just session after session after session that you could attend. And a lot of the sessions this year were repeated, um, nice. which is really good, I think. So, you know, oversubscribed sessions like the Flurlages, well, they actually put a breakout room for them. So there was like the room where they're there doing their talk and then separate. another room for overflow at that That's same crazy. time. That's crazy. That's um, crazy. Which is fantastic. And, and of course, the, the, <laughs> the, those sessions were recorded back as well. So there's two, two, two sort of things I want to call out as really positive. One, one was, yeah, I really like this thing of sessions main day, which is keynote stuff, I'm this. Yeah. And then the final day is, as normal again ran ran for the full full day um i like that and then the second thing i like which is it's kind of semi-controversial they had used einstein ai for all the sessions so all of the sessions were transcribed which is great but what's really interesting is you then get the einstein summary after that session is finished it's like for yeah. me when i i know I, I attended some sessions but not a whole number of them because my conference strategy just yeah is slightly different um I can now go back onto Salesforce Plus and actually find the ones I really want to watch and then just work out what they talked about because yeah. session titles are sometimes so misleading. Uh, like you go in expecting to listen about, I don't know, actual map players, but then you're learning how to mess around with them and do all sorts of funky chart types. Interesting. So I think, yeah. I think that, that worked really well. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the note I mentioned about it being more tablet than Salesforce in person was really kind of like, subtle but if you're looking for it you found it like slap bang in your face right. um the grassy features gone um sales forces had their own animals. Corner and the animals were around but like again not in your face the, you the gra yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the um there was a corner in the data village which is only the connections between salesforce and tableau so if you wanted to learn more about mulesoft and tableau go over there if you want to learn more more about Salesforce Data Cloud and the SFTC connector and all the improvements mm -hmm. they're making between to integrate them closer. There's an entire section dedicated to that. But if you're a Tableau purist, you could just sort of like avoid that area and, and still nice. feel feel happy. And I think that that kept a lot of the uh, the folks who, who who almost are allergic, I'd say, to Tableau. I'm Re I'm yeah, kind of like repulsed by the Salesforce <laughs> brand. I'd like to say I'm very non PC about it. Yeah, there is this sort of just like it is it's not childish but it's 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 this thing kind of like naive is that the word maybe no 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 it's this sort of like instant repulsion because it's not tablet right, right? like mm -hmm. it's it's essentially that and it's fat it's tribal fandom right like in, in football you see this in football and soccer a lot right where as an Ipswich Town fan, team that just got promoted, just got promoted to the Premier League. Thank you very much. Did they get promoted? Um, they did. <laughs> so, oh my word! How did I miss that? Do you know what this means? Go on. Arsenal are going to be playing a football game twenty minutes from my home at some point next year. There we go. <laughs> Re reality Ravi, send me an Ipswich shirt. I'm coming an Ipswich fan just so I can see an Arsenal match. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Can I get on the Ipswich season ticket list uh, at short notice? <laughs> Surely not. I mean, absolutely not. It's not going to happen. But oh like, as, as an Ipswich fan, anything, obviously, yeah. East Anglia, which is where you live, Tim, now. Yeah. Um, East Anglia is, has like the tribal fans of Ipswich and tribal fans of Norwich. Like anything yellow and green, I'm repulsed yeah. by. Yeah. For no good reason. Yeah. Right? And, and in, right, sim- right. in a similar way, you could say that about, you know, the Salesforce blue, the cloud, the, the furry animals the greenery mm. but i think i think there's a i think this is just salesforce doing their job really well you know what i mean like i think works somewhere works inside best. of salesforce they're yeah. like uh there was like an objective which was to sneak the salesforce brand in but not make it too strong and that for me just scored a big fat tick it it was intentional they made a point sure. of calling it out so Let's not kid ourselves here. And I'll come back to why I'm making that point later on. And I don't say that in a, in like a negative way. I'm just saying yeah. like, um, yeah, they, they listened. That's all it is, yeah. right? And they- For they, sure. And I think that's not a re- make, Yeah. Let's not make Salesforce be the topic here. Let's make Tableau be the topic and we'll get what we need out of it. And it was super 100%. important given they were presenting something new. And, and, and that, that, um, that listening piece is really important. I think that was really made clear in Ryan's keynote. So Ryan Ato, yeah. CEO of Tableau, really focused on this is the community. These are things you've asked for. And here's what we're delivering for you based on what you've talked to us about. And I think what is really worth pointing out here is I think whilst there is a very vibrant community, very vibrant community who are closer to the fire, right? Like if you, if you think about how, how, how hot close you can hold your fans to the fire, and how far they're closer to you and how far away you are from it. There's a community that listen very closely and tell you, you know, this is what you need to keep the fire going. But then there's also the ones who are a bit further away that are using the light, if we extended this analogy further, um, who, who also should maybe feel like their voice has been heard because they're speaking to customers. There's a whole idea that how do we elevate people who are way at the back of the conference or outside of the conference room or watch you on Salesforce Plus. How do you bring them closer along this journey and make sure that things we're doing also help yeah. them yeah. whilst being committed to the core user base as well? Yeah, it was good. Um, and, you know, from a from a remote perspective, I'd say they did a better job. I think a third of the sessions that were at conference were recorded. And I don't know if you've been to Salesforce Plus, <clears throat> I found there were like 65 unique sessions that, you know, I'm sort of making my way through all fantastic, all recorded really, really well. And you know what? Salesforce has a platform where you can just go watch these things without having to go to YouTube and find them. There's no ads. It's just there. It's perfect. So, you know, I can't, as much as people might not like the brand, I think there are huge merits to having a company the scale of Salesforce behind Tableau because it can do these kinds of things really, really mm-hmm. well. And and they're good at it. The whole Salesforce events operation runs probably one of the largest events in the world every single year. So, um, yeah, Dreamforce is, is is something that Tableau could always learn from and um, and, and sort of go on from. Um, let's talk a bit about the content at conference. Yeah. Sort of let's add, we talked a bit about new features, the vision, but let's let's let me ask you this: What stood out for you in terms of new capabilities at conference? Because I think you go to conference with two things: the new features, what's being announced, what's coming. Then you also go for the networks and connections. We'll come to that shortly. So if you focus on the features, what, what stood out to you? What can you use? What can you do with stuff now that you can do before? What are you hoping to, what problems are you hoping to solve as Tableau would like to say? <laughs> I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the one that solves a problem that I think a lot of people weren't sure they had, right. which is Tableau Public Desktop. Yeah, All right. So right. I think I'm a, I'm a big fan of Tableau Public. A lot of people yeah. who start with Tableau, start with Tableau Public. Yeah, I remember the first time I downloaded it. Twenty fifth, late twenty, early twenty fifteen was the first yeah. time I downloaded Tableau, um, Tableau nine point oh, and it's Tableau Public, and I was playing around with an Excel spreadsheet. Now, I then had to leave my computer on all night running Tableau because if I closed it, I'd lose it because I didn't want to <laughs> upload it because it's a piece of work that's not finished. Wow, um, is- and if it was uni work, for example. Uh, that I was doing using, you know, the visualization capabilities of it. Don't want to publish publish that. You can make it yeah. private when you publish it, but is it really private? Real in reality, yeah. someone could search it and stumble upon it. So no auto saves. <laughs> no auto save, right? Right. Yeah. So if it crashes, it crashes. 
So I think that that solves a problem that a lot of people didn't have, didn't know they had. And I think, I think the biggest element for me there is, um, you know, Tableau have spent many years sort of pushing um, Web or three, right? To say that you know the best experience you can have with Tableau Desktop actually is in Tableau Web Edit. That it's clean, it's easy. Let's we're trying to make give parity between Desktop and Web Edit, and, and it's been yeah. this constant topic at conferences and keynotes. Now, what what the push to web doesn't account for is um, disenfranchised folks in countries where you might not have good strong internet connection. Mm-hmm. Now, this solves that problem to an extent, right? If, if there is now a commitment from Tableau to say there will be a version, no matter what, there will be a version that you can use if you don't have internet, which is Tableau probably mm-hmm. desktop. Now, if they then make, make this big leap into web authoring only, that, yeah. that solves that problem, right? Can I, let me back that up with a fact. What is the largest audience wide? Sorry, what is the largest continent audience wise for Tableau Tim? Asia. Yes. By what factor? Go on. So like US, US. I was in like ten x. It's about three x. So okay. the whole of Asia outpaces wow. North America three x on my YouTube channel. The point you just wow. made there is actually extremely valid in that setting, right? Because by enabling that massive body of users um, who, you know, would take take um, India. India is actually country number two after the US in terms of viewers. I think if I give some channel stats, it's 35% US, and then it's something like uh, 31% uh, just in India, right? <laughs> like in terms of like my audience, then it's like UK and Germany at three or 4%, which I always find bizarre because I'm an English YouTuber. But anyway, <laughs> like, like how does no one in this country watch my content? But anyway, um, what that tells you is actually that problem you just highlighted is bigger than you think because a lot of the places where Tableau is used, not necessarily bought, where it's used in um, you know outsourced teams around the world they need access not just to use Tableau, but to learn Tableau. They need to be able to prototype and 100%. execute things without having to worry about licenses. And this has just probably enabled that audience. And that audience has typically turned to Power BI for the very reason that it just exists instead of Office 365. They already have access and to it. And it's familiar. So, yeah, so this this is very much a Trojan horse. Now, what concerns me is that, like, how are Tableau going to market this? You can't just change the feature. And I think they'll say, oh, well, Tim, you made a video about it. Yes, I did. But like... I barely scratched the surface. There needs to be like a, a marketing plan, right? And, uh, you know, they need to not rely on the community because the community is not good at penetrating what? The exact place you need this product, which is in the in the trenches of Power BI, right? Like, so you need to have a marketing plan that goes deep into that community of users within Power BI and actually gets this message out there. Otherwise, it's kind of, you just, you, you've not actually had any real impact on the, on the capability. But anyway, I'll cut you short on that one. Right, carry on. Yeah. No, no, that, that was it. That was it. It's, it's really right. exciting for me, I think, as, as we get involved. Uh, my, my other top two features, um, which I'm sure that we'll cover in depth as well, we talk about uh, cross data, uh, cross data source joins with between Tableau data sources. Yeah. So being able to create published data, data sources, mod, yeah. public, public, between published data sources. The the um, official term is for it is composable data, data sources. Right? Oh, composable data composable sources. data sources. Not the same as shared dimensions. So yeah. shared dimension is a prerequisite of composable data sources. Oh my God, this is about to get so hard to explain to people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and this this was the other sort of yeah, like there's a clean marketing problem, right? Like, um, I was talking to Amen to, one of the... to that. Jeez. <laughs> like, <laughs> there was um, what was it? It was a uh, table extensions. I ended up yep. talking to a product manager, uh, Thomas and Han, uh, who should absolutely get get on this yes. podcast. Yes. Yes. Um, we don't want to about... leave Tableau though, so let's not do that. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> the curse continues. So I was talking to him about like a problem I had with um, Databricks connection, for example, and the fact that we wanted to do, do something interesting with Databricks that we're, we're not sure if we can do. And he's like, but that's why we create table extensions. I was like, sorry, yeah. this, this, is, this is probably me being incredibly naive and sort of glossing over and when someone started talking about table extensions, me sort of zoning off. But I didn't even know that was what table extensions did, right? Like when someone says right. table extensions to me, I'm like, oh, right, cool. So conditional formatting just got a bit easier. Like in that. No, yeah, oh no, God, no. yeah. I, if, I, yeah, if I watched yeah, your yeah, video, yeah. Tim, 
I could maybe <laughs> Rabbi, what can I say? Like, come on. <laughs> if you just if you just hit subscribe and just drip feed my content, you'd know this. You'd know this, Ravi. Oh yeah. my god. Anyway. Uh, no, I hundred percent agree with you. Table extensions not to confuse with table calculations, not to be fused with uh, dashboard extensions, not to be confused with analytical extensions, but they all kind of op operate like all the all the same problem space. Like we have this with AI, like Tableau coming out with Tableau AI, and then there's Einstein, and there's Einstein Copilot, and there's Tableau, like just so many ter terms. And it, it, what sometimes it feels like is different teams have yeah. what are like project names. Project names go to marketing as disparate things. Marketing comes back and says, that's what you're going to call it. But none of those people, I'm sure Seemingly. they do. I'm sorry, I, so this is such a, such a bad assumption. It, it appears that there is no oversight over all of that. A bit like Apple, where Apple comes up with lots of marketing names. But when they say HDR, it means a very specific thing. When they say Air, it means a very specific thing. When they say Pro, it means a very specific thing. But that, that is but kind that... of what's needed here, right? This is a tangent, but they, they've changed what air means, right? Like what air used to yeah. mean is the thinnest, lightest, the lightest device. possible but, product. It's no actually, that, yeah. It means light, but L I T E rather than light as in weight, right? It is pro light, uh, as in yeah. pro, it's bringing the pro features to everyday people at a lower price point than pro. And then if it's just the product name, oh my God, I can't believe it. We should just run off into like a tech segment. But okay, let me just break this down because I just so finally got this podcast. three days ago. Oh, yeah. True, true, true. So when Apple names a product, if it's just a product like the iPhone, that is basically the vanilla product, right? If it's an Air, the way to think of it is it's last year's Pro features brought down to a price point in between the normal product and the Pro product. So it goes, Which would be the SE, I guess? Or... Uh, SE only applies to the phone range. But yes, right. but it's yes, the same equivalent thing. of the SE because the iPhone doesn't have an Air version, right? No. So the SE and the Air occupy yeah. the same space. Oh, God, yeah. Um, and so they have this sort of demarcation. But you know, in in laptops and in sort of the technology, they have all of these like Face ID, like that's a that's a brand name. Like uh, Touch ID, that's a brand name, right? Um, they have things like Airport. XDR, HDR, Airport, MagSafe. Like that means a specific thing, not actual names of anything. You know, just so Tableau have this problem. And I think it's just because of 20 years of legacy. This is what's happened. Um, but, you know, there is this discoverability problem. And I think one of the features they showcased, Einstein Copilot, actually aims to solve that. And it's a very, very nice touch because I think it will help pull some of this knowledge forward. It will help you sort of realize that, hey, this is something you could be doing with this. And just out of curiosity, people will be using that capability and, and going and sort of trying it. For everyone's yeah. benefit, table extensions, I'll just explain this now because we just spent five minutes talking about it and not actually explaining it. <laughs> so table extensions, the capability in Tableau that at the point of connection, so the way to think of this, when you're connecting to your data source, you're able to bring in, a, let's say, a logical model. But let's just say this is one of those squares in the connection window. And in that square, you can call a third-party application via R or Python, and it makes that call as it's processing the data. So this is different because it it's done at a specific point in the rendering engine. So yeah. it can be done at the point of connection to the data source. So let's say go get weather data for these locations at the point you're refreshing the data. And it can also be done at the point of aggregation. So there's two places if it can live. actually happen. If live, exactly, exactly. And so there's a really there's a really useful benefit in those two places. And the reason it's called a table extension is purely because you're bringing in a table of data into the connection window, and that is essentially allowing you to go and compute something. Not the same as what most people think tables are, which is exactly what you thought, like tables in a in an Extended actual table. Format. The category that Tableau takes the piss out of, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my um, word. So, yeah. But yes, anyway, comp so composable tangent. data sources. Yeah. Composable data sources. I think this, yeah. my, my initial reaction feedback was, this will probably change how I think about how we set up our Tableau server data sources. Because suddenly, I'm able to have a live connection that is able to compose published data source yeah. together. And that means I'm only refreshing one table because we, we have to refresh our data because sometimes Correct. in some cases it's just too big. But I'm able to now use that one extracts published data source in many different areas and not have to refresh A and B and C and D and D. Yeah. 
in order to get the beautiful it like almost it creates a like, table of specific extracts right and would you say you are using relationships as effectively as you could be we're not using them at all because it's it's well, sorry You're still that's joining lie. data abby we, we, it's a lie we, we, we are using them but it's okay. not we're not using the model as much as we could because it's just hard to comprehend like i i, I still struggle to explain why it doubles or misses data and tableau right. also struggles to explain that back to me um 100 valid yeah 100 valid i'll give you which that. is another um, thing that thomas has explained to me about three times whenever i brought this exact issue up he's like oh but it's just this. we should definitely get him on um yeah yeah to, to explain like, I, this in his words <laughs> I have to be tight lipped because I've ha I've 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 talked to Thomas about this exact problem, and so for that reason, I can't I can't say anything. But <laughs> like, I I I what I'll say is this: for a long time, I was always sat here going, "Why can't Tableau just do this to help make this easier?" And I spent an hour talking to Thomas, and I realized, okay, I've just been schooled here by someone who knows a lot more about this than I do. <laughs> whatever yeah. thomas is working on he is way ahead of whatever you're thinking of and exactly. uh, yeah like it's it's a harder problem than you know um for lots of good and reasons and published data sources is actually one of the things that took a while to solve because because they had to do the data model first i guess they had to do the data model problem. but then they also had to solve composable um data sets and and ah, in relationship right. because then you fall into this trap of being able to bring in two published data sources that refer to the same asset and if you don't fix that, you can have what is like basically a never-ending cycle between between a tables. Self-reference, so, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So you have to solve that problem with shared so dimensions. Number, so number three for me is for the extensions, which is just going to change the game. Yeah, right. like here's the thing with that. Viz extensions, ability to add new charts to Tableau, done, simple. Um, specifically an API that allows developers to add that capability. Okay, great, simple. Here's the thing, as a company, are you going to use the Tableau Exchange to give you those features? Or is there a world where actually something that no one I think took away from the sessions was you might pay someone to build your own set of bespoke visualizations to solve very specific problems within your context that actually are very valuable for you to do. Now, to me, that latter one is actually incredibly- Way more useful. valuable. Yeah, Way exactly. More. No one's talking Conversations about Conversations I've already to, begun yeah. to have, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Get a web developer in, get like a D3 library as a reference that you've seen and just describe the chart types you want and how you want it to interact with Tableau. Bring it into your world. And then that 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 narrative that, you know, someone has been asking you for for years is suddenly possible with a single data source rather than having to do scaffolds and all of this stuff, right? And, and the, the, in, in my particular world, this is probably the single biggest exciting thing that's happened because in my world we're using a business intelligence software mm -hmm. to solve football intelligence problems yeah which are just different right like Huge, in order to yeah. create in, in, in order to create a pass map you need a very specific data structure a very specific set of dimensions a very specific size of data a very specific width of data a very specific setup on your page that I have to, we've got a guide for this, right? Like to say, for a user to build this themselves, you need to do this and then you do this pitch map, you need this one and then you do this. Like it's a step-by-step -step guide. Imagine if you just take the X and the Ys and it's just in the format that we get from the data provider and it's able to take that row by row and just be like, yeah, cool, I can deal with this because I'm just doing everything on the fly yeah. as you require it. And the thing that takes longer is Tableau computing calculations, Tableau yeah. rendering in VizQL. And you're suddenly like, what if we just didn't use VizQL? Let's take that out. Yeah. Let's plug in JS. Else. And suddenly you're, you're flying. And you know, the bit that excites me is, and I, th I think this is, again, another thought that I'm not, I'm not seeing people have yet with this, which is, well, it doesn't have to show a chart. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. And that's my work, like, right? That, that's our what work. It, what if... What if instead of a chart, you had, um, I don't know, um, uh, there's, there'd be, there've been use cases in the past in sports where people have wanted to be able to map, um, telemetry onto, um, let's say a golf swing. Let's say you've got a golfer playing golf and you know, they're going to mm -hmm. swing a, swing a golf club. Right. And you've got sensors on them and you're measuring different things. 
Yeah. Imagine being able to augment their golf swing with data. And what you're seeing is not a chart. It's actually the video. And all you're doing is dragging what you need to onto dimensions to pull up the video. F F1 allows. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Like bespoke visualizations for bespoke narratives. And all you're doing is using the Tableau sort of platform as a, as a vessel rather than as like a thing. And, and this, this is where you suddenly might end up seeing Tableau become the platform they thought they were four years ago, right? Like where you're trying 100%. to bring things closer together 100%. by understanding that why a Tableau eats isn't necessarily complex chart types. It's not the calculations. Where it eats is, it's the best visual exploration tool out there. Like it is the yeah. easiest place to explore your data, fail fast, and get an understanding of the contours of your data before deciding what you want to do with it. And it's just incredibly easy to build charts in. Yeah. yeah. And repeatably yeah. build charts in. And I think yeah. that those are the almost three key pillars. Now, is it, is it the best to use for Sankey charts? Is it the best for a chord diagram, for a sunburst, for a numerate amount of charts? No. But suddenly, it could be because yeah. someone who can just code it up for you. Yeah. The, 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 one of the things I thought of is like, imagine a website like The Pudding creating... Yeah a viz extension for all their stories, right? And then letting you use their narrative storytelling approach within Tableau. That's such just, they've done the web development already. All they need to do is put marks and shelves and color and you're off to the races. Suddenly you're making their visits using their stores. Um, so. and, and, fi and finally, you almost get this nice area where if you're a Tableau product dev or PM mm -hmm. and you're just like, okay, cool. We've got all these chart types that people are asking for. You know what? Build it yourself your or own. let the community build it. And 100%. then if it's good enough, we'll also take it on and build it. And we'll Sherlock it. it. Exactly. <laughs> oh, God, absolutely. Um, you, you'll, do, you'll do what Apple do to every single app, right? Like the journaling app and day one. Eventually, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the final thing I think I'll call out is the... Um, what's it called shared dimensions and then this is one of those things where how do i explain this to people shared dimensions and specifically what's coming in 24.2 which is almost like a preamble for then what's coming in 24.3 right these next two releases to me are really important and um, because they i think they're going to enable people to to do a lot more and going back to relationships i think we almost need like what i would call like a a data connection crash course of some sort. I'm probably going to write that down as a video idea, right? There you go. And just be like, we're going to spend four hours and we're not going to go anywhere but the data connection window. We're going to show you everything you can do in in this little window, right? Just to get your data sources set up. So um, I think it'll be hugely beneficial for everyone. And um, yeah, good. Um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 we, we could just go through the list of stuff that was, was shared as sort of the top features, right? And it's real. Yeah, let me let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. Uh, can I? I can screen share. And wow, look at this. Like Magic. Can, who would have thought? I didn't even... Because there's one that... I, there's two I want to call out and sort of dig into, like... So which... Uh, are you talking about the slide that the, Emacs the, the, the mint, The Mint screen. The Mint screen. You know exactly what I'm going to find. Okay, good. Um, well, while you're finding that, I think the, um, the the sneaky good one is like a tablet of natural silicon. I think that's going to be, yeah. I think I spoke I'm to already Jonathan, using that. I'm right. already using it. It's fantastic. Absolutely Jonathan fantastic. Drummy told me like he had to, you couldn't take a screenshot. He had to do a screen recording because it opened so quickly. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you're a Mac Boom. user with tablet, you're just used to the, the balancing spinner. app icon yeah. and the spinner. Yeah. And suddenly, it Insta just Insta deleted. Insta deleted. I uh, was so happy about that. Uh, um, oh, man. Where is... You know what it is? It's I on didn't WhatsApp, actually, um, Have you got it on WhatsApp? Okay, cool. It's, it's on the it's data from Sideliners chat. Of course. A little um, side side chat with... with um, with Mark, what I have done here, uh, hold on. I have to edit this bit a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> or maybe not. Just keep it in. Save, save me some effort. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Got it. I shared it with you even on that. Wow. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's me who's sharing it. <laughs> you definitely edit the section. I think the, <laughs> um, one area is the Microsoft 
in the, getting closer to Microsoft, I don't think anyone saw this happening, right? Like in one on one side, you're sort of like but competing I think, I think power. This was yeah. obvious. This was obvious to me. Like, you have to. Um, you have to. You have to. You don't have a choice. Like, look, look at Microsoft getting slapped on the wrist by the EU and the American um, justice system for having a monopoly by basically bundling in teams into um, people's <laughs> contracts, right? Like. And and you know what they're doing going forward? They've said, actually, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, we shouldn't have done that. What are they doing? They're saying going forward, new customers have to pay a separate price for Teams. That's great for their revenue, isn't it? Oh, what a coincidence. Uh, but they're not saying anything about the 76 billion customers they already have historically. So um, this is the this is the slide we're talking about here. So yeah, just I'm um, sharing the screen now. So um, it'll be available in the video pod. If you're looking, if you're looking at the um if you're listening on the podcasting app, I will do my very best to put a link to this <laughs> of some sort to this image in the show notes so you can have a have a look. Um, but I, I actually got some confirmation from Tableau um, that this is not a full list of yes. the features that are coming out. So this is just this is the top the headline yeah. headline features. These are normally like the headline features for a release. There are going to be lots of other smaller features that sort of support this as well. Um, and I think we also got a few more that aren't on here on devs on stage at the very end, which annoyingly yes. they didn't showcase in the live stream. So it didn't <laughs> actually see them. No one who was remote saw them. <laughs> Can I just call that out? Whoever was, you know, multicasting the live I stream. I think like, that's, a, there's a good reason for that. Why? I'm assuming that the features weren't ready or weren't like... No, 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 but everyone, everyone in the keynote was taking a screenshot and sharing them on Twitter. So if it wasn't good <clears> enough to share on stream, why sharing it in the conference room itself? Do you I think it's... It. Well, it could be a mistake. Anyway, so frustrating. <laughs> I've, no, I've not seen that slide. If anyone has that slide, please, dear God, send it to me. That yeah. Obviously, any people at Tableau can actually send it to me. But yeah, <laughs> Slack me. I'm on Slack. Anyone at Tableau, please send me that slide. I really appreciate it. <laughs> so so on, the, on this list... The, yeah, let's have a look. Yeah. So the, obviously, we talked about Composable Edit Source. We'll talk about Tableau Desktop Public. Which mm -hmm. is quite an, again terrible marketing. Just call it public desk, like public for desktop. Anyway, um, just call it Tableau Desktop Free Edition. Literally, yeah, which is what they don't <laughs> want to call it. Um, yeah, so we saw how I had to spell it out in my post, right? Like I was like, "What does actually mean? Is it desktop free ish?" To yeah. borrow some of their marketing terms, that will free never leave ish. them. Ish will never leave the Tableau marketing brand. I'll always use it's it so for everything. <laughs> But the, the, the VizQL data service API is another really interesting idea, right? Like, so if it's you're old. This, it's old. It's, it's, been, it's been around for a while, so we've been it's having been it released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, it's, it, I'm interested to see what the community do with that, right? So, like, imagine if you could use the way of rendering Tableau, but with not Tableau, right? Like, that's effectively. There is, it, yeah. Right? There is a world, there's a realistic world where you could use everything up until the data source from tableau and everything beyond there in your own application or third-party setup even a mobile phone app there is also another world where you can do the exact opposite right um you can uh, actually no strictly speaking that's not true because you don't have a way of just using the Pushing charting there, capabilities yeah. or actually do you there might be i need to i need to go away and think about that but there might be a way but anyway They've actually broken down the the platform into its components, and this speaks to the vision of you know that we're going to come and talk to you in a bit of being able to sort of take all these assets and put them together from lots of different contexts to build a, like a bigger picture. And I think it's it's super interesting. I, yeah. I will say though that this this list of features I think has to be viewed in a specific light. I think you have to delete you have to look at this and say who am I, and then ask yourself. What here can I actually use? And if you actually do that, let's say a Tableau Cloud Manager, that's coming out, but it's only available in data management. That's a sort of really good setup. Migration SDK improvements. Again, you can only benefit from that if you have the add-on advanced management to allow you to use the migration SDK in the first place. Share dimension, great for analysts, line buffer. That is an enhancement that has already been released yes. in 24.1. So I don't, I'm not sure why it's showing here is 24.2. Maybe there's oh, an improvement. Easier to get. Maybe, maybe another improvement. Yeah. So fine. Describe sheet shows source tables for measures. Describe sheet shows 
Oh my god, this is like a tongue twister. Describe sheet shows source table for measures. Let me just think about that for one second. The describe so the describe sheet feature shows source tables for measures. So actually, where why can they just say describe sheet? <laughs> describe sheet tells you. Doesn't fit on Wait, one slide, mate. That doesn't fit on one slide. Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> Someone has spent more than half, like two minutes, but I've just wasted trying no, to think no, about this and got GBT, it right first time. Summarize this into one, five words or less. Tableau and Apple Silicon, niche feature. Doesn't matter to you, everyone else on Windows, right? Sub range, refresh, incremental extract. Oh, that's interesting. So, again, I'm just going to spitball what I think this is, is being able to do incremental uh, extracts on sub. On the on parts of your data, rather yeah. than the whole entire set. That cool. was my understanding as well. Hyperforce, um, essentially cloud cloud, cloud capabilities like AWS, uh, VSQL data service. Okay, composable data sources. Okay, custom theme for easy formatting. Okay, about time. And There's, then yeah, but next I, year. You say about time. You, the extent of this hasn't really been properly tested, has it? Like I've not seen it in betas. Um, oh no! I really no, want no. to understand oh. how how much they you can really format. They, Everyone saw this as templates. Let me be absolutely clear here. Let's just let's just get this absolutely straight. Whatever you think it is, it's not. <laughs> and okay. <I> <laughs> the way Tableau rolls out, and I, I'm just going to go off on a tangent here and just say this again and again and again because I it kind of frustrates me a little bit. When Tableau do a new feature, they never knock it out of the park on the first release. That's not a shade. That's not me saying, hey, Tableau, you know, don't understand how to listen to people. No, no, no. They always phase in improvements. There's not been a feature in the last five years just turned up out of nowhere other than Tableau for Apple Silicon that hasn't been previously tested, right? Like, you know what I mean? And it's always come out in bits. Data model, the virtual connections. Yeah. They've always had, here's an initial set. We'll let you do fonts and titles. Then in the next release, we'll add something else to that. And then in the next release, we'll add more to that. So in three years, in two years, yes, we might actually be sitting at something we call templates. That is the vision. But for now, it's probably just going to be titles okay. and colors. And that's I fine. That's okay. Yeah. And, and that's why I made that point, because I just I don't want people to get their hopes up and then dunk on it on day one, because <laughs> what that does is it dunks on the product developers who are doing really good work and have a roadmap yeah. because that's how features are developed um, to kind yeah. of, you know, sort of um, flesh these out. Resource monitoring, again, you need the add-on. Private link for AWS, probably need the add-on. Public profile page, uh, custom ordering. That's tablet public. That's folders. That's folders um, that Yeah. <clears throat> so a lot here that's not sort of really as you say, sort of well thought through, but sorry, not well thought through. I didn't say that for clarity. <laughs> that's a bad turn of phrase. I was thinking what I was saying, I'm saying right. it's not well thought through. What I meant that there's a lot of features on here that don't apply to everyone. And therefore, yes. when you see this list, you can't just look at it and say, oh, it's all for me. There are but things that for different And that's different how sets. you should look at every feature in every product that you consume. Like not right. everything yeah. is for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing in this is that um, obviously server doesn't get an update in 24.3. So yep. there will never be year. anything in that year. It's only not to a year, every other release. There's some years yes. where there's only one release. So here's the kicker. Next year, you'll get something in January and then nothing until the very end of the year. <laughs> right? And then, Which is fine. Again, as a server it. admin. like. And then in 26, you'll only get the point two release. So this yeah. point two this year, is the only release this year for server, the only one, right? Grand. So um, I think it's fine for server. Uh, people will say it's not, but hey. Um, so we can go there. <laughs> let's, uh, <laughs> talking of which, let's move on to the vision. Yeah. Now, I have a big question because you were in the room. Do you want to um, Yes, good shout. You were in the room and... I just literally this morning, um, before I started work, recorded my uh, reaction to this, just this section of the keynote. And my hunch was that the room was quiet and wasn't as hyped as some of the Salesforce staff who were hyping it up in real time as, as it was, was happening. Like, how did it land in the room? Because I, 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 thought, I thought it was off a little bit, as in... The room didn't know how to take 
the re- like this this announcement. So what was your read of it as you were there? So this is a fourth wave of analytics, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cold. But I think it's it's not something I you get so. hyped about, right? Like <laughs> if you're really honest, like thinking about a concept of yeah. here's where we were and here's where we are. It's like, yeah, let's keep going, guys. <laughs> like you're not going to go crazy for it's kind of your for, job, right? As tabloid. Yeah, very, very right. Very like key, yeah. you, you want to tell me the trends? Tell me the trends then, and yeah. tell me what you're doing to keep up with the trends, which is effectively what yeah. it was. It's this like centerpiece. Now, <laughs> the the probable killer is no one really talked about it. Right, like it made oh, a lot of sense. Show. It made a lot of sense. I'd follow it. Like, yeah, cool. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I, I, yeah, this is a good theory. This is a good vision. Yeah. Now what? And then, and then you almost follow it up with, "Here's what we're doing towards it," which is the product and the features and the mm-hmm. almost trying to hit on on the same notes, which it, which is fine. Um, but yeah, no, I, don't, I didn't hear it mentioned once again. At the same time a software vendor's keynotes have journalists in the room who are going to write about Tableau yeah. at that customer conference. And this is what they talk about. Yeah. I walked away with a slightly different take, having watched it now five times. <laughs> and I only arrived at this take like after the third watch where I was like, wait a minute. Hmm. So the first issue I had with it is, hey, actually, We've been working at this for quite some time. We're only just about to show it to you. And by the way, we're going to announce it at Dreamforce. So actually, we need your feedback. So actually, can you sign up today and use it? Like, you know what I mean? There's like, there's this sort of slow, like, you know, revelation of how far down the thought process they are. And it did feel like they're bringing us on a little bit late. And I, I don't think that's intentional. I think it's just... It's just the way that the cookie has crumbled on this particular thing. They've they've definitely arrived at like tablet. And let me be absolutely fair and crystal clear on this. Salesforce inherited a company that had a backlog that was probably as monumental and as long as the history of features that Tableau is announced. The right? ideas forum? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the, the, the list of features deployed and the backlog <clears> is exactly <throat> the same length. And so... I think Salesforce took a long, hard look at the backlog and thought, right, the only real way to kind of make any of this even achievable is to start from scratch. So I think this is absolutely a valid approach. It's the only way you're going to solve some of these bigger challenges properly. But there's one big but. On the fourth watch, I suddenly had a uh uh-oh moment, which is, is Salesforce trying to rebrand Tableau as a squarely Salesforce 360 product, right? And they're doing it in the guise of solving all of these other problems that we've been complaining about a year. And in doing that, moving it into the platform. So by moving it, what I'm meaning is the Chrome and the way you experience it will be in the Salesforce 360 rather than being where it's currently been in, which is a separate product. I'd say about three years too late on that take. Like uh, if you'd ask me this after TC... Mm -hmm. 21 or maybe 22 yeah i would have been like yeah maybe it feels like it's like then they're showing the wheel and it's like the analytics part of the wheel and all of this stuff and it's like it's suddenly like all you're seeing is like salesforce demos and how it integrates well into salesforce and the salesforce connectors getting better so i think maybe then yeah. however i think you almost it, it's building the foundations while servicing that at the same time, so I don't, mm. I don't think you're wrong. I think two things are happening at once, and and there's almost this recognition of okay, yeah, you know what, Tableau is a fairly big brand with a fairly strong, yeah, following. Um, my, my, I spoke to a PM shortly after the um, announcement that Salesforce had bought Tableau, yeah, and I, re- I remember them saying like, you know what, like. A lot of people are sort of concerned, you know, that we're going to get swallowed up in this big company, just be part of, like, you know, they, they look at MuleSoft as yeah. the most recent and most obvious. Um, since then, you can look at Slack. You don't really know that Slack is a Salesforce company, do you? No. If I'm honest with you. Um, and in a similar way, I think Slack and Tableau are more comparable than Slack and MuleSoft. But what the, his, his sort of viewpoint was, well, what this really means for, for if you're a dev or a PM or someone who's working on the software side rather than the marketing side or the business side, or the sales side is suddenly features, ideas, things you might have wanted to do that 
after a bad sales cycle, one quarter Never chance. would have been defunded. Suddenly you're like, well, you know, Here's it's a okay. Map. Yeah. Like we have a roadmap, yeah. let's stick to it. We're making the right way forward, right? And yeah. I think this is almost what they've done. And I kind of understand why they started off with the Salesforce parts first. Like if you're selling this product as part of a Salesforce suite, and then it's not very good at connecting to your data. It's like, well, this is a bit embarrassing. Yeah. Um, but now it's almost this, cool, we're okay with where we are now, but we're going to have a bunch of people continuing to deal with that. Mm-hmm. Now we've got to, well, let's go back to what this is. Now, the last couple of years, we've been listening to our community, our customers, our people yeah. to understand what they really want. And they want to look at all these forum ideas, as you just talked about, just get through them, get, yeah. get through dynamic parameters. Like, give us the ability to compose data sources between two published data sources, mm. right? Like, yeah, th- th- these things are coming, like supercharged Tableau Public. This yeah. was one of the requests that I had. Like, Tableau Public yeah. is the best learning platform out there. And it's something that's really good. A brand. It's a great brand. And now it's going to, there's already a great trailhead, like, walkthrough on, uh, like, a trailhead mix, I guess. Uh, training, training thing on trailhead, Salesforce's platform. That is fantastic for you starting with Tableau. So like yeah. you start you're starting to see this thing where the value of a brand as big as Salesforce, you're getting there. Like it's really moving in the right direction. And I'm gonna say it's moving in the right direction. I'm not saying we're there. I don't think we're No. You never get close. there for a Tableau as product as no. the biggest Tableau, right? The the, the goalpost is always moving forward and you can continue to see trying to score in it, right? Interesting. I I thought the way their vision of the world of work is what got me thinking about this because it didn't it didn't align with you know they talk about people doing like bringing tablets to the places where people work and when you say that yeah. in my head i'm thinking monday.com notion you know to do i'm taking all these teams. actual places teams yeah all these actual places that people do work but they only showed workday and slack in, in in a very sort of limited context and they show this world where people are building custom apps again very niche activity right and it's 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 felt like a very forced vision to kind of show this narrative that the like the the Salesforce platform and Tableau specifically is this thing that fits everywhere. And I don't know if that's like an aspiration of this new vision or what they perceive as the reality of what they're building. Because the reality of what they're building is that you can't just support, you know, Slack. You have to support Teams and probably Google Meets or whatever. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, you have to really come at this and launch with everything out of the gate. Yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't really sell that sort of vision. But, so I challenge that the world of work is changing, right? Like you, you don't have really, like, and, and the role of analyst, and I, I wholeheartedly believe this, Yeah, will, will just fundamentally change. And, you know, ThoughtSpot have their dashboards are dead tagline. What yeah. they really mean is no one wants to self-serve. So what you need to do is deliver insight at the point of which they work so they can yeah. get their answers as quickly as possible, which is why... AI, GPT, Copart, these sorts of things become really useful because it's almost like mm-hmm. where I see the, where we're going to meet people where they work, I see that in the flow of their work. And that's what I mean. Like, what do they do every day? Yeah. How do we integrate ourselves so that they know where to look when they have a question? And the yeah. analyst will become what I call a knowledge curator. You've probably heard me talk about this a hundred million times now. <laughs> but like the curator. librarian of insights, right? Like hey, people who all tricks all tricks had it right with artisans, curators and galleries and all that it's jazz, right? In the wrong place. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Oh. <laughs> but yes. They had the analogy down, just not just not the rest of the platform. <laughs> oh oh gosh. gosh. Yeah. Um story for another day. Um yeah. interesting. I'm, I have mixed feelings about this vision. I, I have to deliberately kind of stay quite tight-lipped because I'm in this, again, awkward situation where I think I've seen more of it than I should do. So to avoid avoid sharing anything too much, I have to just not talk about it. But I think it was really interesting to see it in public. It was really interesting to see it sort of, you know, finally out there. Kind of a shame you have to wait till Dreamforce to see it and use it. In Like... In my video, I said, well, the majority of people who could have gone to Dreamforce are probably in that room, which means they've blown their conference budget for this year, which means they won't be coming to Dreamforce. But thanks to the 35% discount, um, you know, that, that, that might help alleviate that problem. The other thing is, why Dreamforce? Why, 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 like, that's only two 
like three months away. So you're you're saying twelve weeks for feedback on something you've been working on for how long? Like it's a really but tight to, turnaround. To, to use an Apple analogy, do you announce the new Mac OS at WWDC, or do you do it at a Mac event? But in the Salesforce analogy, the Tableau audience aren't turning up to Dreamforce to hear about Tableau. Does that make sense? Like the Tableau audience are turning up to Tableau conference to hear about Tableau. Like it's a slightly, it's it's a it's an exception to that to that to that rule. So like you're going to be here's here's the here's the risk. And what we've are seen the this Tableau people before. turning up to Dreamforce for then? <laughs> like, here, 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 here's the risk, and we've seen this before. No one turns up to Dreamforce from a Tableau perspective. And so mm -hmm. you're doing the Tableau keynote to basically an empty room, like that doesn't get it, that will see everything on screen and say, oh, this is cool, but won't be hyped, won't be passionate, and and things will be off. And it's not going to resonate with the Salesforce crowd as strongly as it's going to resonate with the Tableau audience, you know, whether it's good or bad, right? Like Now, now imagine, imagine that keynote is full of customers, not, not, not community members, not mm -hmm. the front yeah. 20 rows Actual of customers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, like not real not ambassadors, customers. not, yeah, yeah. yeah. No one that's in recognition program. And then imagine if they go nuts for it. Right, and then they're like, yes, this is actually what we really need. That you've got mm -hmm. decision makers in that crowd. You've got people who are really core Salesforce customers who are now suddenly like, yeah, we, 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 we kept getting the pitch this thing Tableau by our Salesforce sales rep. Don't know why it's biz, but hey, I'm at Dreamforce. I'll go to Tableau Keynote and see what, what it's about. And then yeah. as a senior decision maker, you're like, actually, yeah, yeah, this kind of, this kind of makes sense. Uh, you know, fourth wave analytics and then, you know, delivering data to the person in the flow. That's kind of what we're trying to do, actually, in past part of my five-year plan as a CDO. Yeah. So again, th th this is, it's a real, you make a good point, but I think you, you're more likely to get, you'll get honest feedback from the Tableau conference. Let, let, let me be clear. No CDO is going to the Tableau keynote. They're going to the AI keynote, right? Like they, yeah. like all the CDOs as, you know, uh, Ryan put it up on screen going, hey, you know, like 90% oh, of CDOs are like worried about the use of AI in their business. Like, Every single data officer, every single executive, every everyone in the C level is going to all these conferences to understand how they can capitalize on the latest technology. They don't see Tableau as part of that narrative, not yet. They haven't seen anything to show them that Tableau is that part of that leading edge narrative, right? Um, yeah. And so I just think, like in a session, in a in a conference that's full with competition of things you can go to and do, like it's just a hard ask. But yeah. Maybe I'm being skeptical. Maybe we need to <laughs> wait and see, as it were. Yeah, anyway. yeah. There you go. When the dream, when when, when Dreamforce comes around, we we can do a little little debrief for that one as well. Yeah. Right. Let's uh, let's spend another five minutes closing mm -hmm. off. But but first, I'm gonna ask you a tough question. Out of ten, what would you give the Tableau conference? You know what? I'd say overall, this this one was an eight or nine. Like, they, okay. like I think okay. my best experience what? was New Orleans. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing that got New Orleans a nine, not a ten, was the size of the convention center. Right. What makes it an eight, not like a six? What, what What's like the top thing that really sort of pulls that score up? The conversations were a bit richer. I think. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 Good. Then, um, and I think there was a strong contingent of fresh ideas. Uh, a positive outlook overall. I think the, the, the feeling in the room was was a lot better. Nice. And, and hey, may, may, maybe it's just because you're not in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there could also be that. Right? That's like one you, thing. Yeah. Yeah. You're not in a, um, you're not going to the Scott Hotel. <laughs> well, yeah. And but, but yeah, what... it's not recycled air and dry desertness and stuff. So. <laughs> and then what would make it a 10? That's the final bit. Oh, that's a great question. Getting, getting, giving devs a bit more of a spotlight. Like there was almost this feeling of half the room, and like in and again, this is something you probably didn't spot it in in person. Is devs on stage was great, mm -hmm. but because the keynote overran and people wanted to get to sessions, 
and make sure you got there. People started leaving. Yeah, I saw that. On the it screen. was. Yeah. I saw someone walking out. past. <laughs> I was like, "Come on!" I was like, "Sit down." <laughs> At this a rate of knots, stage. <laughs> at a rate of knots, like you know, you, the keynote ends, and you know, I look behind you, like, oh, this, this room was very full, yeah, and that yeah. was very empty. Um, I think giving giving that its own sort of space, and even if it's a small space, it's okay that if no, not everyone goes, but giving the space to breathe for those developers to showcase what what's coming now and next, it, it would be really cool. And does it need to be long? It doesn't need to be long, but I think it needs its own space to sort of allow for demos. And then almost if that rolls then into really nicely, like, and then over here, if you then stay in this keynote room, we have some demo stations to yeah. give you feed, immediate feedback and thoughts yeah. to the other people. To stay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Make staying like, um, Pr privilege, uh, exclusive, like a privilege. Yeah. 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 yeah and yeah. I think, I think that worked really well. Um, other than that usual stuff, like I'm a vegetarian, the lot, I was going across the street for tacos, which isn't an issue, but when you're having the same salad three days in a row, it's not good. No. Interesting. But again, th yeah. those are, these are just like conference snacks. Conference, yeah, impossible to solve. Perfect. Perfect yeah. conference does not exist apart from maybe a concert. <laughs> no. But it, it was good. Like the layout of Data Village, the, it was easy to get around to room. Sessions were well managed. I, I didn't mm -hmm. ever feel like I couldn't get into a session that I didn't expect to be overbooked or anything like that. Um, yeah. The app was really good. Like I, I actually quite liked using so it. Sales Events is a great app by the looks yeah. of things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So great very feedback. Positive. Great feedback. Great feedback. I, like I'd give it a seven out of ten from a remote perspective because I think they did more of an effort than last year. Last year I would have given it a five or a six. Yeah. But this year it's a strong seven because like thirty percent of the sessions, i.e. the sessions you actually want to watch and need to watch. Like if you were to miss anything, those fifty sessions they picked felt like the ones you didn't want to miss. Yeah. Uh, and they also felt like they tell enough about what they want you to know and going into the future that you can kind of get all the rest from other people. So um, that was they, good. They they did meetups this year as well. So mm -hmm. I hosted a sports meetup. And I think the nice thing about that is it was very led. Like there was one Tableau person, one non-Tableau person that was leading a meetup. And it worked really well because it just got people together. Like there was no agenda. Like you could, but you could throw up some slides and run an activity if you want to. We did a little quiz and then we just got a few questions to discuss in groups of three or four. Yeah. And by the end of it, we were like, we're not going to close it. We're not going to say disappear. We're just going to say hang around because it was this like really nice community space. Mm -hmm. And when the, well, the meetup after us turned up, like they just cracked on and then people stayed for that because they're like, this is interesting as well. Yeah. Um, so I think that was a really nice way of making connections. Um, you know, historically, they've done things like brain dates, which worked well. Yeah. But I think something new, like a, just a generic, if you're interested in public sector, if you're interested in healthcare, yeah. or if like the one they did which i think nailed worked really well was a newbie breakfast so if you've never been to tableau conference which is a lot of people this year by the way yeah like a lot of the room was very first new. time conference yeah yeah which is fantastic they got to understand what they should do what they shouldn't do all these like things that a breakfast that was put on that was really good i thought that, yeah. that was a really nice touch good all round great all round great all right then. Um, yeah, let's call it a day there. I've been going for an hour. That's uh, it's a slightly it's longer a than usual. Uh, yeah. But hey, we're we're back and we're committed, right? So that's what you get. Uh, extra chat to make up for all the years that we literally years we didn't do one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, a few really, people really stopped me at TC and said they were happy that the podcast was back. But um, I know, right? I, it's I, I assume this is because you've had you've gained celebrity status. Um, <laughs> If you end up at TC yeah. next year, Tim, you're going to get stopped for many a selfie. <laughs> I think my mission for TC is to come as one of those undercover people, right? Like, <laughs> I go, go, um, go into these uh, fancy dress shops uh, or something like that. Get like a get like a makeover, a different wig on, and just see if I can just make it through conference without anyone noticing I'm there. I think that would be great. <laughs> Yeah, no, I did miss conference. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I think I, I um, have not been to conference since before COVID. Yeah, that was the last one. I went to the conference in Las Vegas. Yeah, then I went to New York with uh, my now wife, and then yeah, have not been abroad since. 
So, wow. Yeah, it's been a really, really, really long time. Kids have happened in that time and a bunch of other things. So, God, I think it will have been, what year was that? 21? No. It'll be early uh, 2020. No, it was, the previous conference in Las Vegas was November 19. Yeah, 19. Wow. Yeah. I've not been to conferences since 2019. We're in 2020. Oh, 25. Jeez. That's, that's that's a long time. Didn't feel like five years, but now you say that. I'm like, yeah. It's that COVID thing, right? There's time disappeared blur. somewhere. Blur. Yeah. Like two years just gone. Right. Okay. Let's let's call it a day there. Um yeah. yeah if if you're listening, you want to know where to find the podcast. By now you've probably figured out it's available in the podcast app you're listening to it on. Um also on YouTube. We've had 300 people listen to our episodes. So YouTube there went we from nothing to being the biggest platform we've got an audience on. So um, that is that is immediate upgrade. So thank you to everyone Excellent. watching on YouTube. Um, if you want to sort of uh, ask questions, by all, by all means, do so in the comments. We'll, we'll both be sort of checking it out there. And um, yeah, we'll catch you in a couple of weeks for the next one. Thanks for listening. I'll see you soon. Take care.